Orleans. Stanley, this town's got a name with a dance in it. Business, Mason, we're here on business. People sure in a hurry down here. Well, so should we be. Get these birds in here and start haggling with Trader Jacques. And then? Get out and get home. This town chews your kind of life. Yeah, ain't that wonderful? Countess de Rochambeau, the biggest prize in New Orleans, and you let us slip through your fingers. Oh, no, wait a minute, Citizen Boucher. I found out she was in New Orleans, huh? I was the one who discovered she was aboard the refugee ship, huh? And what does that all add up to if we don't find her? Now, do you know what it will mean if we ship her back to Paris? Robespierre would hand us New Orleans on a silver platter. We'll find her. All right, you take this street, I'll go the other way. Presenting The Rage of Paris, a toy everyone can enjoy, BU 6 or 60. Every Republican home should have one. Citizens, the nobility of France has gone wild over this little instrument. King and queen, dukes and duchesses, one and all, have lost their heads to Madame Guillotine. <laughs> from moon country to some fine furs like that. Ah, it's magnificent. Get to it, Pelletier, how much? Oh, these are very disturbing times, Daniel. Mason, get ready for a terrible tale of war. What is a businessman to do in this terrible situation? Who came first to New Orleans? The French, eh? All right, New Orleans is French. Then one day they have a war in Europe. And we wake up one morning, New Orleans is Spanish. Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca, tale of woe, tale of woe. Make your story briefer, how much for the beaver, and off we'll go, off we'll go. Well, hey, how can one do business in such a state of confusion? I got a solution for the whole affair. Oh? Uh -huh. Someone ought to arrange another war between Spain and France, and this time the loser gets New Orleans. <laughs> and now what is going on? The revolution is going on in France. So if we are French, which French are we? Now tell me that, Daniel. Are all traitors alike? Why, he's as long-winded as Cincinnati. We're listening, John. 120 Spanish dollars. 150. 30. 140. 35. Huh? Jacques, you're some kind of skin flint, but you got yourself a deal. <laughs> I... I can't go no further. Quickie. Qui est-ce qui nous dérange encore? Can I help you, sister? Oh, no, no. Don't let us disturb you. We'll just look around. Come, sister. Well, Doc, we're going to need some supplies. We need a couple of bags of flour, a bag of beans, sides of bacon, lead for shot, powder. You be want anything, Mason? Just sweet Sylvia here, if we can afford it. Add it in. I'll be hitting the trail, eating bacon and beans, never tasting the sweets of New Orleans.
There's Yvette's and Mimi's and sweet Josephine's, but I'll never have kissed one in New Orleans. How are you going back, Daniel? Uh, the Natchez trace to contact? Nope, we're heading straight north. Mason and I have some business in St. Louis. St. Louis? Oh, then maybe you will see my friend there, Father Gibault, a grand homme. He has a missionary school for the Indians, you know. But you must uh, see him. Tell him you're my friend. Tell him Jacques Fletcher hugs him. I'll tell him, Jacques. Now, now. How about the uh, nice ball of silk for Madame Boone, eh? Well, now, that might be just the right idea. I beg your pardon. I'm... I'm so sorry, I couldn't help overhearing. You're going to St. Louis? Yes, sister? Uh, sister Louise. Sister Berth. Sister? It's an amazing coincidence, isn't it, Sister Berth? Oh, oh, yes. What? Oh, this gentleman is going to St. Louis and will be visiting Father Gibault. Uh, we've just arrived from France to join Father Gibault to teach in the missionary school. That's a fine idea. We're thrilled, aren't we, Berth? Oh, uh, thrilled. But we have a problem. We can't find transportation. Would you take us with you, Monsieur... Monsieur... Boone. Boone. Enchanté, Monsieur Boone. I'm Mason Pruitt. You have a very lovely voice, Monsieur Pruitt. Thank you, ma'am. Please, we won't be in the way. We're very good travelers, aren't we, Sister Berth? Oh, very good travelers. Well, I'm sorry, Sister. Uh, we'd like to be of service, but I'm afraid we can't manage it. But why not? We're not afraid. We travel in the armor of the Lord. Well, why don't you wait for uh, an escort going north, a soldier escort? There is no such party, and there are no soldiers. Sister, the trail is raw country. Now, you'd be much safer to book passage to Philadelphia or even New York and head west from there. That'd be the best advice I could give you. Mason, you and I'd better pack up and head out of here. Daniel, couldn't we wait a day or so? No, sir. Not one more hour than we have to. Well, maybe we could help the sisters find an escort going north. Well, maybe Jacques would know more about that than we do. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't know, no. Well, at any rate, it's been very pleasant visiting with you, and I wish you both a lot of luck. And I'm very sorry we couldn't be of service to you. We have had a very tiring time. Sister, I'd like you to tell me something. I know where you say you're headed for, but will you tell me what you're hiding from? Why do you ask that? Oh, I've done a lot of hunting. I just got a way of sensing things. And a vivid imagination. Obviously, we'll have to look elsewhere for help, sister. Oh, I'm not a blooming hero, this I must confess. But I never turned away from a lady in distress. I'm ever gonna explain it. Explain what? Coming all the way down here to New Orleans and not taking in the sights? Well, I don't like what's going on. Daniel Boone, a little nervous about a revolution? It seems to me you've done your fair share on her own. Well, ours was a little different. We managed without terror and uh, the threat of the guillotine. I reckon the French got a right to do it their way. Maybe so. I'm going to fill up, all right? We are looking for two nuns. Somebody sick? Oh, nobody's sick. Well, spiritual matter. Need guidance. Now, it's good to meet two pious men. We asked if you had seen two nuns. Recently? Did you or didn't you? Oh, you're going to have to supply me with more details. Was they thin, stout, young, old? One was young, one old. Hmm. Well? Now, that's a combination. That's a little more difficult. Let me think here. Uh, 
And... No. Wait, just a minute. I did see two nuns down by the square. But they was thin and stout. You was looking for, uh, young and old? What'd they want? Religious guidance. You're a fine one to ask. Sister, your armor's showing. Well, you're gonna have a long, hard trail to travel. Well, we got good company. Company? Sweet Sylvia. <laughs> Get up there. I'll be hitting the road, eating bacon and beans. Never tasting the sweets of New Orleans. Park. Here on out, the trail gets a little bit rough. We might as well try to make another mile too before we make camp. Understand up ahead, the ruts are so deep, the Indians use them for bear traps. The man and his horse fell into one of them a few years back and haven't been heard of since. You pulling my leg, Daniel? No, I wouldn't think of it, Mason, but keep a sharp eye. We can't afford to lose what's in here. I'll do that. And Mason, while we pass under these trees, keep your eyes peeled, because snakes have a bad habit of dropping down from the branches. And as long as we're stopped, maybe you'd like to invite your guests to get out and stretch their legs. Well, that's what they say about Daniel Boone. Eyes in the back of his head. You knew we were here all the time? Most of the time. Looks like you're real anxious to get to that school in St. Louis. Don't take us back. Please. Please, monsieur. Well, believe me, sister, it'd be for your own good. You've seen what the trail is like. And it's the truth. What's up in front is rougher than what was behind. Oh, monsieur Boone, it is so important for us to reach St. Louis. We're not afraid of what's ahead. Well, I uh, can understand that, sister. Daniel. Well, look at this. Church ladies. Better tip your hats, boys. If you're searching for sinners, here's a parcel of buttes. There ain't a one among them that ain't a kin of Lucifer himself. Where are you heading? North. You ain't gonna get much for your trading goods. <laughs> Why didn't you send us back with them, Monsieur Boone? Well, to tell the truth, sister, I'd rather have the Lord on my side than on theirs. That's what I said, two nuns. And all their, uh, whatever you call it, big black dresses, black head pieces, looking like big blackbirds. They'll scare five years' growth out of the first bear they meet, that's for sure. How far up the trail did you see them? Oh, maybe 15, 20 miles. They're with a couple of trappers. Your men still with you, Horn? All right, get some supplies. I want to leave within the hour. And the French are great hands at cooking. Mm, I am the living evidence, monsieur. <laughs> well, out here, we don't go for the fancy, just the filling. When in Rome, feast like a Roman. Mm, it smells delicious. Enjoy it, sister. Might be the last hot meal you get for quite a while. Merci. Pardon. Oh, 
I'm just too exhausted to eat, Bert. All I want to do is sleep. You must eat, please. I shouldn't have let you come. They gave you in my charge as an infant. We have never been parted. But who knows what's ahead? It could not be worse than what we have left behind. Now, please, you must eat something. You know, it's a funny thing, Daniel. The way the older one looks after the younger. Mm -hmm. Seems to me like it'll be the other way around. Yeah, I've been thinking, Mason. You know, when you come into new country and you run across signs that don't make sense, it makes you a little curious. I'd just as soon know that the trail behind us is clear. So I want you to backtrack and take a little look-see. Tonight? Oh, first thing in the morning. Why don't you see if they're all right? All right. Mm. Uh, is there water? Yes, ma'am. I'll get you some. No, no. <laughs> Merci. I will get it. Tired? Yes, yeah, it's rough country. It's a land like no other on earth. Wild beauty. Roars of thunderstorm. Savage. Do you appreciate it, Monsieur Pruitt? Well, Kentucky's my land. Is it like this? Oh, yeah. Squeeze out the water and pile up some hills and open the meadows. Maybe plant some corn. And paint in a little clover, you got yourself a fair copy. But still lacking. What? Friends, no place as much without friends, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, I didn't mean to make you upset. Well, it's just I don't know much about sisters, and I reckon where you come from, you left a lot of friends, and... Well, don't you worry, sister, where you're going, you'll have a lot of new friends, Indians, and... The oh, please. Oh, Monsieur Pruitt. I haven't thanked you enough. You're a very kind man. Excuse me, ma'am. father's estate, the willows, and the big oaks, and the swan. And the time you were chased by a swan right out of the water into the meadow. And father came riding by with a company of hunters, and you, you were... Louise! Not a stitch on your back. Into the rose bushes, into the thorns. <gasps> Monsieur! Monsieur! Uh, go away! Louise! You see anything? Well? Oh, there's eight of them, right behind us. Two of them's in the city looking for the nuns, and they're with that mean-looking trapper passage yesterday. You better get going. Get the women. Daniel, I've been made a chump of, and I don't think I like it. Neither would I. I helped them because they were saintly women, nuns. The nuns don't have long hair, and she does long, black, wavy hair. She hoaxed us from the beginning. Don't worry about that later. You know what it is. 
She's running from the French, one of them political things. I don't think we should stick our necks out. Here, give me a hand. Well, she's probably one of them rich, noble women. Spoiled, living off the sweat of others. A parasite, a leech, an exploiter of the peasantry. A conceited, simpering, mindless, useless member of an effete and, and decadent aristocracy. Well, just a minute. Yes, I... I am a noble woman. And my name is Louise Maria Charlotte de Rochambeau de Chalon. Comtesse de Rochambeau. There's a tumbrel. Take me to the guillotine. You can set up your own private reign of terror. Look, I was just saying that... I heard what you were saying. There's no time for this. The Mason has backtracked the trail. The French are right behind us. Daniel, I don't like being made a fool of. Well, now, you're doing pretty good all by yourself. Now, let's empty this wagon. We'll take just what we can carry. The rest we'll put in the bushes. We can't stick to the trail. We're going to have to go overland due east. That's our only chance. It's going to be rough going. Are you up to it? Take such a risk, Monsieur Boone. This is a political thing. You're not involved. And we'll argue that point later. Are you up to it? You lead the way. We got what we need? Yeah. Just follow your nose. Get out! Help you! Get out! They've stopped here, huh? But not for long. And the wagon tracks, they lead this way, huh? All right, let's follow them. Ellie. Come on. Cover up these tracks and go on and lay down a false trail. following an empty wagon. Where can they be? Of course, we'd have more sense than to pull a wagon very far without a driver. I'd say they probably cut into the brush back there a ways. Why would they do that? They must have realized they're being followed. Well, where would I take them? As the crow flies to Natchez, but only a crow would be crazy enough to try it. Where does this trail lead? North, to the Missouri country. Up a few miles is a fork. The right trail leads you to Natchez. All right. I'll take four men and ride up ahead with your horses. Morning. You go back and try to pick up their trail. On foot? The horses would never get through that brush. Well, and do. don't come out without them. Is that clear, citizen? Very clear, citizen. The count is Rochambeau. Mighty pretty. Well, I doubt it'll make it any easier on the trail. Well, it's all I have. Where's Berthe? Oh, she's, she's changing, too. Maybe you better keep that covered up. That's as good as a signal. This belonged to my father's family. I saw your father once. You did? When he was commanding the French troops during the War of Independence. He came out west with General Washington to review our militia. He was a handsome man. Yes. 
when he heard they were coming to arrest him. He insisted that I, I leave France immediately with birth. The last time I saw him, he leaned into the carriage and he kissed me. And he gave me this. Continental Congress of the United States, Monsieur Le Comte de Rochambeau. In view of your extraordinary service to our people, the Continental Congress of the United States offers you their immense gratitude. We cannot hope to repay in kind the debt we owe you. Our most fervent wish is for you to consider our country yours and to someday welcome you and your family. What will they do to him? I don't know. But wherever he is, I'm sure he's not worried about himself. Just about you. I laid in a trail that make a hawk dizzy. Any sign of anyone following? None that I saw. Oh, this is foul country, Dan. A rougher than any I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. You think we're doing the right thing? Well, we don't have much choice. At best, we have a bare chance of getting through. Well, I want to take that chance. All right. We'll cut straight east, then north. That won't get us to Missouri. No, but that'll get us to the Natchez Trace. Way, huh? There's no trail here. Nobody's been here. You will follow where I go. You don't know where you're going. This is a blind trail.
They stopped here, huh? A blind tire there. It took us long enough. Beans. Don't dare fire. Well, oh, they do a lot better than they taste. Oh, Monsieur Pruitt. I'm sorry for being so weak. Oh, I know you're no frontier gal. Out here, they work hard and shoot a rifle like a man and... I'm not unused to guns, Monsieur Pruitt. In hunting circles, I was known as, as a fair shot. After all, I used to practice on peasant babies. We'd line them up in a row and bam, bam, bam. I'd like to say something. That is with the Countess's permission, of course. You may speak. You know how a man and a woman act to one another? Well, that's a funny thing. Is that so? Yeah, well, it's not like one man to another. You can say one thing and mean another, and there's no harm done. Mm. But when a woman fakes a man, well, that's like taking a needle and just stabbing him with it. Causing great pain. And suffering. And the result is a man just gets mad and forgets his good sense, and he says things he don't mean, stupid things. Do you know what I think? I think you're trying to say you're sorry, Mason. I reckon you're right. Now, well, Daniel told me about your pa. And I'm beginning to have great admiration for your family. Every member. Countess? Countess, gotta keep moving. must be the Natchez Trace coming in from the east. If they are headed for Natchez, they'll have to come this way. We set up camp far away. anymore. We can find another way. Why don't you stay here with another way? I'll be back. Well, we've been looking. 
walk and walk and match his trace. Oh, you've got loot. Smell it? Fire. I better have a look. Let's get these ladies back in the brush. Maybe just some other travelers. Well, it could be, but on the Natchez Trace, you look before you leap. Dan, let me go. I'd feel a lot better if you stayed with the ladies. All right, Mason. Mr. Poirot, be careful. I'm always careful. And Mason? Bon chance. Good luck in French. Okay. Tell the men to see your load and stay away. has just been walked on. Ah, oh, boy. Let's hurry on, then. I suppose you'll head directly east once we get to Natchez. In Philadelphia. One day, maybe you'll get to visit us in Kentucky. I think you'll like our land. Some other way to get to Natchez without traveling the trace? It's that way, but this little settlement for hundreds of miles. Well, it seems I'll not see Kentucky after all. We made it. You smell that? Huh? Sure, I smell it. It's a campfire. All right. Come on, we go. We'll take them by surprise. What makes you so sure it's them? From what we've seen, I'd say they're too smart to build a fire. More likely it's your friend Boucher. Well, the more reason then, huh? You want to get your horses back, don't you? There'll be a time for that. Right now, let's talk about money. Matt here and I decided we got double wages coming for that walk through the swamp. Said about that in our original agreement? Nothing was said about a trip to a country like that either. All right, all right, you'll get your money when we have the contest. Follow me. Follow me, beat, beat. No, well, you have to. You've taken care of me all my life, but I won't let you suffer anymore. Monsieur Boone, my mind is made up. No more running, no more hiding. Those men down there, they want all me, only me. They don't care about you or, or Monsieur Pruitt or, or Berth. I'll give myself to them, then there won't be any more trouble. Goddess, you may have just solved our problem. Daniel, you got plumb out of your mind. You, you can't let her go. I'm not going to let her go. You're going to take her. What? Got a pistol, Mason. Yeah, in my pack. 
this could be a little bit like horse trading. Now, what a horse has got to do with it? Nothing. It's a trading part that counts. You could have passed them in the dark. Well, the only way open is to the south, back to New Orleans. Unless they take to the brush again. But from what you told me, I doubt if they have strength enough to do that. Or if they have, they can't have traveled far. They can. All right, mate, on your feet. Ain't you even going to give us time to eat? Not when the end of our search is so near. Get your horses. That won't be necessary, Mr. Boucher. You have me at a disadvantage, monsieur. You know my name, but I don't know who you are. Let's just say I'm a man who has some merchandise you want. He's one of the trappers I was telling you about. Oh, the royal guide. You led us on a merry chase, monsieur. Take his gun, Monet. Just a minute. I think we have a little bargaining to do. Oh. I admire your audacity, monsieur. But how can you suggest a bargain when there happen to be eight of us and only one of you? I figure that Countess Rochambeau is worth more alive to you than dead. Granted. As I say, we have a little bargaining to do. Ah, she is not dead, Boucher. We would have found her on the trail. You hear, monsieur? Or are you suggesting that she might have met with an accident? She hasn't met with one yet, but she might meet with one any minute now. Mason! Now tell your men to drop their rifles. Mason, count to ten. If they haven't dropped them by then, shoot them. One. Two. Three. Four. An excellent bluff, monsieur. But I doubt that the gun is loaded. Mason, keep count. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right, men. Got the guns. Bert. Get their rifles. So. What have you accomplished, friend? You cannot kill all eight of us. No matter where you go, we will follow you. You there. Boucher promised to pay you for finding the Countess. Where's the money? Here? Are you mad? Of course not. He's gonna pay us when we get back to New Orleans. How's he gonna pay you? What do you mean? Is he gonna pay you in gold? Gold. Who has gold these days? They'll be getting French francs, of course. Paper. Answer the question. Of course, it's paper. Which might be worthless by the time you try to spend it. The French Republic is in bad shape. I'd hate to gamble on their money being good. Oh, he's trying to trick you. You will get your money, huh? And it will not be worthless. What has he got to offer you? Here. What does that look like to you? One for each of you, if you'll help us get the ladies safely to Natchez.
You'll pay for this. Now, <laughs> with paper francs? <laughs> Mr. Boucher, you and your friend get out of here and have a nice walk home. First time in months I can take a breath without it catching in my throat. That's the best I could find this time of year. Oh, you're beautiful. Well, Harley makes up for that diamond necklace. A small price to pay for freedom. Jonas, your carriage is ready, and with the soldiers to guard you, I trust you will have no further trouble reaching Philadelphia. Miss Berte, I hope you find this part of your journey more pleasant than you did the last. Oh, the way will be better, but not the companionship. <laughs> Merci, monsieur. How can we ever thank you, monsieur Boone? Well, Countess, uh, I'll tell you. Come to Kentucky. Oh, we will someday. I will never forget you, monsieur Mason Poet. Countess, I'd like to thank you for the guitar. And... Bon chance. Bravo, monsieur Poet. Adieu. Adieu. Goodbye. I'm young and I'm strong, and I sing a fair tune. And I'm known to look twice at the beckoning moon. Now the moon has lost its musical sheen. And I met the Countess in New Orleans. Well, she didn't bust out laughing or nothing. What are you talking about? Well, I reckon I'm as good at hand kissing as any old duke. And Philadelphia ain't so far away. There's Mimi Zivets and sweet Josephines. And I met the best one in New Orleans. 